talking about the role of technology in supporting teaching and learning and also in how we will be using technology and how technology is being used in education. Okay, so the role of technology in supporting teaching and learning, that is going to be the topic, the focus of the very first session of this unit. So here we are going to be talking about some of the technological advancement that has that we have observed for the past couple of years, especially during and post pandemic. And also we're going to be talking about the evolution of the facilitator's role. As you could see at the moment, you are sitting in front of a screen and you are learning more about levels, the level six diploma in teaching and learning. And that is due to technological advancement. So we are going to be looking at how your role as a facilitator has evolved and what are the trends, how the role is going to continue evolving. We're also going to cover the benefits of using technology in teaching and learning. So let's take a moment to focus on some of the benefits of using technology here. One of them is the fact that when we use technology, for instance, virtual learning, let's, let's focus on virtual learning systems or tools as an example. So virtual learning, what is the key benefit of virtual learning? It is the fact that you could join and study from any point of the world. So the actual destination does not matter. Um, that type of virtual learning is actually uh, quite useful for people who also may prefer this way of learning. So instead of commuting, instead of physically moving from A to B, they learn from the comfort of their own home. So the benefit of virtual learning are huge, the benefits, right? So this is just an example of how technology has allowed us to learn from the comfort of our homes, from any part of the world, and also in a way that allows us to learn new knowledge and implement also meet people from all over the world as well so we're going to look at some of the benefits and also we're going to look at some resources and what their role in supporting teaching and learning is so let's have a look at some resources that you are probably very well familiar with okay so i'm going to spend a little bit longer here looking at those different tools um, because it is important that we become acquainted with the various resources available to us as practitioners within that field you could be pursuing an opportunity that involves delivering training um, or teaching in a school face to face but given the trend and as i said post pandemic trends in the education industry is that much of nowadays teaching and learning is facilitated still online so it is quite important for us to be aware of the various tools that could come in handy so zoom if you are new to zoom zoom is a platform that allows you to facilitate online sessions, meetings with a camera that are video based and you could also deliver training, you can deliver learning. Zoom also allows you, the Zoom platform allows you to share your screen, share your PowerPoint presentation, also place some YouTube videos. So the actual platform is one of the most popular platforms used nowadays to facilitate uh, learning and development programs, especially for adults. So when we're talking about delivering um, training as practitioners to adults, especially professionals within the professional industries, then Zoom is a tool that is really wildly used. And I believe that the capacity of Zoom is hundreds of people, three, four hundreds of people. So it actually allows you to deliver training to a large number of people 
from all, all, um, dif from different locations. So this is a platform that um, could, if you're new to Zoom, as I said, this is something that we are going to be um, looking at as a resource, a technology resource that could support you in your teaching and learning role. Another useful tool is the uh, is Google Classroom. So Google Classroom is very much used in schools and also some companies use Google Classroom and that allows you to create presentations straight away on Google Classroom. It also allows you to share the different presentations with students. It allows you to also check homework. A couple of months ago, I was in a teaching role and I was losing. Go I was using a uh, Google Classroom. So there are no limits, literally, as to what you could do on Google Classroom. Everything could be done virtually with your students, even if they are, you know, children because it allows you to check their assignments, it allows you to communicate with them um, via a kind of a, um, a board where they can post comments, they can ask questions. It also allows you to create and share the actual slides and material, the actual lesson, the overview of the lesson via Google Classroom directly. So that is also quite a useful to that we are going to be looking at during the actual session. I'm also going to be bringing more examples of how exactly of other tools that you could be using so that you learn about some of those uh, highly effective platforms that are used nowadays in modern day education. And the final tool is SurveyMonkey. So SurveyMonkey is very much about, um, well, as the actual name suggests, it's a survey based, survey based platform. So SurveyMonkey allows you to design any sort of questionnaire where you are collecting data from your learners. So coming back to reflective practice, coming back to um, the module of uh, the, the unit of reflective practice and also coming back to evaluating the effectiveness of the training um, course, SurveyMonkey can actually allow you to digitally design the questionnaires so that you can collect the necessary feedback and you could use that in order to improve your own practice, to reflect on your own practice and improve it as a practitioner. And at the same time, it can be used to evaluate the effectiveness of the overall training activity. And up to 10 questions, it is free to use. So this is quite an important tool that could come in handy depending on the type of role, um, teaching methods and means you are planning to be using. So let's have a look at the second session and that is going to be the final session of the actual um, of the actual unit and the final session of the diploma of the level and that is going to be on learning how to use data. So as I just mentioned SurveyMonkey is a tool that allows us to collect data which we can then analyze and then during the second session we are also going to focus on how to actually conduct and draft research, how to draw conclusions based on research using technology resources. Okay, so when it comes to research, let's take a moment to discuss why research is important. Well, first of all, research allows us to understand where we can improve, but also it allows us to plan and, and, and cre create and implement training and development and education programs that are a better fit to the learning outcomes that we are striving towards meeting in our training and development sessions. Okay, 
So research is a key element when it comes to improving the overall effectiveness, effectiveness of a learning and development intervention. Okay, so during this session, we're going to look at types of research, but we're also going to look at how we're going to learn how to conduct research. So we're going to look at the steps that we can take. We're going to look at the tools that we can use. SurveyMonkey is one of those tools. And we're also going to look at how we can analyze the data that has been collected in order to guide curriculum, future curriculum, curriculum design and development and also how it can help us to improve our own teaching and delivery practice as well. So that is what we're going to be focusing on during the final session of this unit and uh, the final session of this level, actually level six. Okay, so you've probably um, it's a lot of information that we have covered during uh, this overview session. And what I would like to do uh, just before we wrap up and just before we, we end the overview session is to really talk about, again, the six modules and so that you can perhaps take a note and know exactly what we're going to be focusing just to kind of really wrap up things, okay? so. Let's again come back to the very first module and uh, module, sorry, unit. That is curriculum development. So let's summarize. We're going to start with unit number one, which is curriculum development upon enrolling in this level. And during this unit, we are going to look at designing, developing and evaluating curriculum. During the second unit, which is actually lesson planning, we are going to be talking about how we can plan lessons effectively. At the actual session, it's actually four sessions that are part of this level, um, a part of this unit, we are going to be learning how to create lessons and we're actually going to create a lesson plan together at the session. There will also be homework, so that session will allow you to practically understand how to design and physically create a lesson plan. And also, again, talking about some of the risks involved in designing lesson plans and what we should be focusing on and taking into consideration. The third unit is management of class dynamics. That is the unit where we're going to be looking at some of the strategies that we could be using in order to create a fav favorable to learning environment where all our learners are feeling supported and the actual environment contributes to meeting the learning objectives of the training and education program. Okay, so the third module again is very much about the management of the learning environment and the specifics of that. And then the fourth module is going to be about you as a practitioner and how you could use reflective practice to improve and also to continue progressing on your professional path as well. We already looked at what the sessions that are part of this unit are going to uh, include. But again, as a summary, we're going to look at the different approaches that you could use in order to continue developing as, a, as an effective practitioner within the field of education and training and development. And we're also going to create reflective locks at the session. So each of you will have their own lock that you could use as well. And that could come in quite handy because this is the reflective journaling, actually a, a reflective journaling lock, um, actually a reflective journal where you can lock different entries is 
quite a useful practice that could be adopted over years of time where you could actually evaluate and you could even use some of the data that you've logged into the journal. You could create that journal for yourselves digitally. Again, talking about technology and how you could do that. And look, you, you could look at how you have improved throughout the years or you could actually do it manually if you prefer writing. But in the actual session, um, the actual unit is going to allow you to learn how you could use reflective practice effectively. And the fourth unit was integrated environment. So during the four unit, um, you are going to, well, actually integrated teaching, sorry. During the four unit, I have been delivering from, uh, for you guys in the past 45 minutes. So please, well, an hour, forgive me if I mix up a word here and there. But during the four unit, we are going to be looking at diversity, equality and inclusion as essential concepts that should be taken into account and consideration when we are developing curriculum and also when we are delivering the activities. We're going to ensure that we are up to date with all the necessary legislation and we are compliant. And the um, fifth, well, the where were we? The final module is going to be on the topic of technology in education. That is going to be about the different tools, the different re te technology resources that you could be using in order to ensure that you your are not only evaluating and improving your practice, but you are also improving the learning experience for your learners and also the effectiveness of some of some of the programs that you are delivering as effective uh, learning and development or education practitioners. So as I said, this whole level will prepare you theoretically, but also it is going to prepare you practically. Um, when it comes to progressing on your path professionally and also understanding how you could use all of these tools in order to be successful in your um, chosen area as a learning and development practitioners. There will also be doubt clearing sessions where we're going to focus on assignments and industry examples. And this level, again, is also rather practical, theoretical, but also practical. And the pieces of theory that we are going to be covering are very much, um, we are going to be looking into how we can put them into practice straight away at the actual sessions. So I hope this gives you a good overview as to what you're going to be learning during level six and um, I am looking forward to supporting you on your journey to um, becoming an effective practitioner within the field of learning and development, education and um, yes, so I'm going to um, wrap up now and I'm sure that if there are any questions you can submit them to um, our faculty team and they will be responded to promptly. I hope you enjoyed this overview and again it is just a very very brief description of what you are going to be learning throughout this level. Okay.